G'day, how you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy, my name is Tech, and I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I live and work on. They're the Wajuk people of Noongar Buja. Now today, I'm going to rant a little about sizes and size comparisons in boots and how difficult they are to actually find out what your size is when you're buying uh, off the web. So if you're like me, you'd have discovered that uh, buying a new pair of boots from a new brand on the web is as stressful as getting married, getting divorced, moving jobs, moving house. It's probably on top of that list. Now, I have no idea why uh, it is so stressful. People ask me all the time on this channel, on, on my Instagram, and to be honest, all I can tell you is this is how I size in that particular model. And all feet are different. So, you know, I'm always worried that when I answer your questions, I'm going to drive you insane because you're going to get the boots and you say, what the hell was Tech talking about? Because it doesn't fit me. And so you have to take whatever I say with a caveat. But what I'll try and do in this video is show you some different sizing options and how they compare. Um, the difficulty, I think, is you have uh, different sizing models. Now, in the European sizing models, you can take a look at the size number and you know something weird is going on because they're, they're double digits. They're 41, 42, 45, 43 and a half. So you know that, okay, they're European and I'm going to have to work out what they are equivalent to my size in my country. Uh, but then on top of that, you have to work out whether they make their boots large or not. But I do have to say that most European makers do tend to make their boots true to size, which I'll talk about later. Uh, Many UK bootmakers also make their boots true to size, but some, oh, probably 50-50, do make their boots large, so you do have to kind of size down from true to size. Uh, Americans, however, they're kind of all over the place, so you kind of have to know the brand. Um, apart from that, you also have to know your width. Now, American width models, you know that D width is the average, and then you go down to a C or a B for very narrow feet, and you go up to an E or a double E uh, for really wide feet. Uh, the uh, UK models also have roughly the same kind of uh, width sizing, but they can't agree <laughs> which is average width. In some makes, like RM Williams, for example, their average width is G. In others, their average width is F. <laughs> go figure, it's really hard. Um, and then on top of widths, um, you hear people say, oh, oh um, how does it compare to my sneaker size? Dear God, I have no idea because my sneakers in Adidas size differently from my sneakers in Nike and I've worn Asics before that size completely differently. And sometimes, depending on the last of the sneaker, you'd size differently in those as well. But quite apart from all of that, Usually when you wear sneakers, you want a reasonably loose fit because you want to be comfortable. When you're running, you want a little bit of movement. Uh, and there's also all that padding and foam which makes you flex a little bit. With heritage boots, you want to try and get a snug fit, the so-called uh, firm handshake, because you don't want your feet slipping around. That's the worst uh, 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 case for getting blisters. So uh, trying to compare your... A heritage boot size to sneakers is a total miss in my opinion. I don't know why people do it. Um, I think the best way of doing it is to get yourself measured on a Brannock device. That's one of those aluminium slidey things that you go to a, sh a good shoe store and they'll have one and they'll measure you up not only for your length but also for your width. And it's important um, when you measure for the width that you're actually measuring uh, the width where you flex your 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 um, your feet, because if you got, um, if you think about a boot like this RM Williams, the ball is the widest part, but your toes might be shorter or longer. <laughs> so you want the boot to flex where your feet flex, and sometimes the overall length doesn't give you that that fitting. Um, I'm going to link uh, up here if I can figure out how to do it, and certainly in the description below. I'm going to link to a video from Almost Vintage Future. Dave, who runs that channel, uh, did a really good um, a video on 
uh, Brannock sizing and how to use a Brannock device. So get yourself measured on a Brannock device. Um, and forget about these phrases that, you know, oh, uh, we size large, so take a half size down from true. True as what true? True as in sneaker true? True as in your usual dress shoe size true? I've heard all of those mentioned in websites. Please get yourself measured on a brand device and then do some research. Let me take an example, my own case. Um, my brand device measurement on a US measurement. Uh, oh, and by the way, when I was ranting on about European measurements, uh, UK measurements are different from US measurements. They have exactly the same numbers, but the UK numbering system is one size down. So a UK 7 boot is the same size as a US 8 boot. So remember when you're going from uh, a, a US, if you live in the US and you're trying to buy a UK sized boot, take one number down, not one size down. They're exactly the same size. It's just one number down. All right, so what I was going to do is give you my example. On a US Brannock device, I measure uh, US 8.5 in D width. So immediately, uh, I know that if I bought UK, my true to size UK is 7.5 in whatever they call their average size width is. So true to size, US 8.5 D. Uh, in many boots, they say we size large, so go down to a, a half size down from your true. So in many cases, like in Parkhurst, for example, oh, this is heavy. Let me just take this up. Give me take that a second. Um, so in many cases like this, Parkhurst boots, it's a size eight. What complicates matters is, of course, Parkhurst uh, is a combination last, and they don't have Ds and Es. They just have an eight. <laughs> Yep, uh, and the combination last it means that they start off with, I think, a C or even a B size heel. Uh, they have a C or a B size waist, and then they go to an E size ball of the foot, and then they round off the toe. So the combination of various widths. Um, and in, say, these uh, White's MP boots, they're also an 8, coming down uh, half from an 8D. But the last makes this a long, skinny shaped 8. So in fact, and when I show you when I compare them, this is longer than other eights that I have. Then, uh, that means that I know that I have to come down to a seven in a UK boot. This is a Grenson Fred. I know that I have to come down to a seven um, because an eight equals a seven. Got it? <laughs> okay. So uh, that's where I am in my own sizing. So let me start comparing some US boots and some UK size boots. Some bootmakers will say you should go true to size. So in fact, in both the Oak Street Bootmakers Trench Boot, I go eight and a half, which is my true to size on the Brannock device. And Caswell Boots, the owner, Kevin, uh, suggested I go true to size, and he was right. So these two are true to size US eight and a half. They're about the right length, you can tell. Uh, the Elston last on the Oak Street Bootmakers is a wider last, so you can see that it's actually quite wide. Uh, and if you then compare the toe shapes, there's a sharp almond shape in the casual boot, but a rounded one in the Oak Street Bootmakers boot. And um, you can tell, I think, from the side by side that it's definitely the same size at eight and a half, although the widths are a little bit different. Okay, so. Let me now look at my half size down US boots. So this is the Parkhurst in a size eight. This is the uh, White's MP boot in a size eight, D. And you can tell the eight D is slightly longer because of the MP last. I hope you can tell. Can the camera angle give you that? So the MP boot is slightly longer. If you look at the um, width shape, they're roughly the same not forgetting that uh, the Parkhurst has stretched out or, or is designed to have a, an E-shaped uh, ball of the foot. So um, the width of the White's MP is nearly as wide. Okay, so now let's blow your mind. So this is an 8D, don't forget. This is an 8.5D. So we look at the length size, yep, okay. Wait a minute, the White's MP at 8 
look longer than the Elsin lasts at eight and a half. Uh, that's a bit weird. Let's take a look at Parkhurst size eight. Oh, look, they're the same length. So the Parkhurst eight is equivalent to the Oak Street bootmaker's Elston last eight and a half. So if you objectively measured these two boots, they'd be the same length. It just so happens Parkhurst says, we size large, this is an eight. Oak Street bootmaker says, we size true to size, this is an eight and a half. You get the problem? <laughs> okay, so now that we've uh, 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 discussed and, and probably got disgusted with US boots, let's look at the British boot makers. Not that different. So, um, let's start with the Grenson Fred boot. This is size half down. Remember, I'm a UK seven and a half. So this is a UK seven. Fits my feet perfectly. So, half size down. Uh, this is a Blundstone. Made in Australia boot. And let me do the two made in Australia's. So this is the Blundstone, made in Australia. Uh, I beg your pardon, comes from Australia, made in Vietnam. This is the RM Williams, made in Australia, comes from Australia. Uh, this boot in Blundstone is a size seven. This boot, RM Williams, is a size eight. <laughs> Look at the length. Yeah, okay, the eight's a bit longer. Yep, I get that, size seven, size eight. Cool, I get that. Why is that? Well, if you look at the widths, way wider, right? I'll show you from the top. Blundstone's a lot wider. Yep, I think it's, I wouldn't have said it was a half size larger, but marginally larger, okay? So you might say uh, size seven, size eight, maybe a half size bigger, and definitely not one full size bigger. So a seven and a half in RM Williams is probably the same length as a seven in Blundstone. Here's where we get complicated. Um, RM Williams do come in half sizes, so you can get a seven and a half. This is an eight. Blundstones also come in half sizes, but you don't get a half size extra length. The Blundstone's half size defines the width. Same length, slightly wider. Seven and a half. Blows your mind. Now we take the UK boot and compare that to the RM Williams. This is a size seven. This is a size eight. Yeah, definitely, definitely wider, uh, longer, I mean. In width terms, this is a little bit more roomy and uh, 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 probably fits my f um, the ball of my feet a little bit better. This is quite snug in the ball of my feet, but you can see why I have to go to an eight and not a seven and a half, because if this went uh, narrower proportionately, this would be extremely squeezy, which is exactly why I weigh eights in RM Williams. Let's compare a size seven boot to a size seven boot. Is that the same length? Would you say that's the same length? I'd say, yeah, not too bad, marginally. Okay, so let's, that's a pass, seven and seven. And now we come to the Weiberg. The Weiberg is Canadian. To us, outside of the American continent, uh, we hear a Canadian speaking and we probably think they're American. Uh, you guys would know better if you're in America or in Canada. So, as a Canadian boot stuck to the top end of the US, people kind of consider this might be American. So, should I be getting an 8D? Nope. They use UK sizing, being a good Commonwealth country. So, this is in fact a 7.5D. So this is true to size. This is my UK Brannock size. Seven and a half, RM Williams in an eight. What do you reckon? Is this a half size shorter? I think not, <laughs> right? So this is true to size, seven and a half. This is half size uh, larger than true to size, uh, UK eight. To me, the length is exactly the same. They fit exactly the same. Compared to the Grandson's UK 7s, yep, okay, seven and a half, bit longer. This is not short on my feet. This is not long on my feet. Why? Bit wider, narrowly wider. So you tell me why these fit my feet so well. I have no idea. So what we come to is the fact that boot makers don't do the logical thing. They don't 
buy a last or design a last that fits into a Brannock and when it says a size 8, it is a size 8. Somehow they make a Brannock and they call it a size 8 but it might be a 7.5 or it might be an 8.5. I don't know. So in summary, <laughs> cutting through all this confusion, what do you do? Um, Number one, as I said before, get measured on a Brannock device. Know you're true to size, absolutely. Uh, number two, ask the bootmaker. Uh, don't just write to them and say, oh, look, I'm a size seven. I, uh, what, what should I wear in yours? Make sure that they're aware um, what other boots that you have, what size you take in those boots, and then ask them how you compare. I mean, if you can, you might also say, look, I have a Thursday captain in size 8. Um, I do find the length fits me, um, but the cap toe is quite squeezy and the ball of my feet has now stretched, um, but it was quite narrow before. Give them that sort of information so that they know what to deal with. But I'd suggest that what you do when you contact the bootmaker uh, is to give them brands of boots or shoes that you wear that are quite common. Don't say, oh, it's a uh, Vietnamese made Xing Sua special Chelsea boot because they'd never have heard of it, right? Tell them what a Red Wing, uh, how it fits you. Tell them how a, um, a Grant Stone fits you. Tell them how a uh, RM Williams fits you. And depending on where they are, they ought to know uh, how they compare to their own lasts. Um, I think what I then do is, is, despite getting the answers from the bootmakers, actually do some research on your own. So you ask poor people like me, who feel bad and they have to respond and say, look, this is how my feet take those boots. But, you know, that's my feet. But the more you get of these kinds of opinions, don't just take my opinion, the more you get of these kinds of, of opinions from myself, from um, people like Dale uh, at, at uh, Aerosurfer LV, uh, from other, you know, from Nick at Stridewise, um, go into the Reddit Goodyear Wealth Forum and have a look there, search through there, do some Google searching. Go to the actual manufacturer's website and see if they have um, sizing apps. Some of them have really good sizing apps where you put down Thursday, for example. You put down the different types of boots that you wear and what sizes you wear, and they'll recommend a size to you. Mirmin is another one that you can actually say, this, this brand, I take this size, and they recommend a size to you in their different lasts. So do your research. Do it widely. Don't rely on one source. Uh, and then ultimately, See what the bootmaker's policy is on returns. Now, for those of us who are buying US boots and uh, UK and Canadian boots in Australia, well, hard luck. It costs about, um, I think it costs about 70 US dollars to send a, a pair of boots to me in Australia. So I'm gonna have to spend 140 bucks, in fact, $210, uh, to get a boot sent to me, find out it's wrong, send it back and get a new pair sent to me. So we luck out, it's not great. But if you're in the US and you're buying US boots, see what their return policy is. If you're in Australia and you're buying Australian boots, see what their uh, return policy is. If you're in the UK and you're buying UK boots, see what the Australian pol uh, return policy is. Uh, good tip. If you can get uh, an official Amazon store, not one that somebody's created and they buy second hand or factory second uh, boots, but a real uh, official Amazon store, and I think Thoroughgood have them, uh, I'm not sure about Red Wing, but I think Thursday have an official Amazon store. Uh, the Amazon return policies work. When you buy the boots, they're slightly more expensive, but the return policy means that you can buy with some, some level of comfort. So find out what the return policy is, uh, and then ultimately, keep your fingers crossed, make the order, and hope for the best. That's the best I can give you. I have to say though, my formula, I think I had one pair of boots which I really had to put in, oh no, sorry, two pairs of boots that I really had to put in uh, uh, extra insoles to bulk uh, the volume up and uh, I have to wear thick socks with them. But for everything else, I've tended to follow the bootmaker's advice. I've tended to go a half size down when I've been told to. Uh, I've tended to go true to size when I've been told to and it has worked. If you're buying from eBay, as I did these Grenson boots, a little bit more risky. But if you do your research, uh, they've come out fine.
I think that's fine. So there you have it. That is my rant uh, on different sizing. And I hope maybe with some of these more popular models, maybe not the Grenson, that's quite a specialist one, but with the Weiberg, uh, the Blundstones, the RM Williams, the Parkhurst, the Whites, the Caswell, the Oak Street Bootmakers, hopefully that comparison I've shown you between different boots will give you an idea of how they size, you know, slightly larger, slightly smaller, and how they fit. I hope that helps. If it does, you know what to do. There's a like button down there in the description box, go click it, and there's a subscribe button, which if you haven't already, go click that, because I'm gonna bring you uh, more boot reviews and more crazy rants like this, where hopefully you can get some good information. Until then, don't forget, click on subscribe. Until then, take care, and I'll see you soon.